Well, hi everyone, Philip Shields here. A lot of world events are happening right now that could very well point to the very last days, or certainly years, before the return of Christ. I've thought it possible that he could be landing on the Mount of Olives by as early as 2030, just eight years or seven years from now, or 2031. I'm not the only one saying that. So just and that's just pure speculation, I'm not prophesying. But for that to happen, a lot of big stuff and scary stuff does have to start happening um, in the right now, in 2023, 2024. If they don't start happening in a big way, we are not likely to start seeing Jesus drawing us up to him in the clouds, as Matthew 24 says. By big stuff, I mean uh, the appearance of of a, the beast system, the beast power, that seems to be, the foundation seems to be being laid. Um, perhaps a temple being built in Jerusalem, at least the start of sacrifices, if not an actual temple, and other things. I, and in the, the Jerusalem picture for the temple, certainly the red heifers are there. All of the, almost all, if not all of the instruments and articles needed in the temple. I've seen them, I've taken pictures of them, including the gold menorah, and many, many things, including the high priest's uh, clothing is all there. Also, besides that, they're training the priests already. So th th that could very well happen in the next year or year and a half or less. But with a lot of big events unfolding before us, some of you are becoming, as one person put it, numb, scared. One lady says she gets up around three or four in the morning and can't go back to sleep. Sits in a chair by her bed and just feeling numb from what she sees and hears going on. Others, on the other hand, don't seem to be even aware of even basic news because they either aren't watching the news at all or they're watching the news channels that won't report anything that's negative to our President Biden. For example, some of the news that people are very aware of that can be very upsetting our southern border doesn't exist. An estimated 3 million illegals, some say 5 million, in the last two years have come from 140 countries and they can just walk over into our country. We process them and we send them all over the country and there are lots of companies looking for workers so, you know, that's their hope. It's not counting the that's not even counting the what we call the gotaways, the people we don't know even came through. We do know that we've caught some who are on the registration for terrorism. What are we setting ourselves up for? Why are we having such high food prices on food and everything and inflation out of control? I think a big reason is the transporting of everything. Price of gas, oil, diesel has skyrocketed. It's only down some because President Biden depleted much of our national emergency oil reserves to provide more oil to lower gas prices. But those reserves were supposed to be there for emergencies, times of war, catastrophes. But he really took the supply way, way down. Russia's war against Ukraine. Putin is now even getting bellicose enough to threaten attacking London with nuclear bombs. If the West continues its support of Ukraine, did you even, have you even heard of that? It's it's been he's been he's been saying that. Add pandemics, earthquakes, crazy weather, climate issues, and times can be scary. But how does God want us reacting to all of that? And are you aware the FBI met dozens and scores of times with top officials of Twitter to tell them which accounts to block? thus directly breaking the rules that our government is not supposed to get involved with private companies and get them involved to do their political bidding, plus violating our First Amendment of free speech. FBI and the government has no right leaning on private companies to do things that could influence the 2020 election. Are you aware that Saudi Arabia has just signed a $50 billion deal for oil with China? Are you aware China is gaining control all around the world? all around the world, and uh, most lately in Brazil and Peru, and uh, all through Africa and different places. 
Uh, they certainly have the largest navy in the world. They've surpassed the U.S. Are you aware our U.S. dollar is ready to tank, ready to drop, and could be jettisoned as the number one world currency? And if that happens, our savings and investments won't be worth much. Are you aware that much of Europe right now, as I speak this in December 2022, they have little in the way to heat their own homes or stay warm in winter, especially the Ukraine. Murders, rapes, break-ins, carjackings, muggings, burglaries are all-time highs by wide margin. Violence and crime is off the charts. Now, I think this fear and anxiety would probably be true, especially most true for women, especially single women or widows who live alone, who shop alone and so forth. It might be high time to always find someone to go with if you can, to go shopping with, to go walking with. Don't ever be, you know, these women who are attacked and killed, who are, who are alone, they're jogging alone by themselves, beautiful young women. To me, that's foolish. But uh, too bad, too bad that's happening. But women can be feeling more apprehensive than we men might even realize. With all the news of attacks and carjackings, even at gas stations and rapes and so on, women always try to have someone with you. Keep watching around you. Be alert. And always pray before you go out for divine and, and angelic protection. Pray for that in your own home. Every morning you get up, pray first about that. Anyway, our goal is to have peace in our hearts no matter what. I just gave a, a sermon recently on perfect peace in troubling times. I hope you'll hear that if you haven't already. Present your concerns with thanksgiving to God and then let God's peace surround you by faith and trusting in God. So much of this today is going to be all about faithing and having faith and trust no matter what we hear is going on. Many of you are aware of all this and so no wonder you're feeling anxious. And yes, sometimes Yes, uh, sometimes we just have to also realize that the times are going to get worse and worse. It seems everything we had as our foundation in our country is being torn down here, Australia, Canada, Europe. Whether it's the traditional family with dad and mom at, at the helm and the children and respecting the flag, loving our country, having a country with borders and laws, respecting law and order, respecting the police officers living in a country that's running by its constitution, especially here in America, the U.S. Constitution. We're losing all of that. Crazy, crazy times are happening. So again, hello everyone. I'm Philip Shields, your host and founder of LightOnTheRock.org, where I do my best to teach God's Word as it truly is written, as best as I understand it, and help us all to have a closer walk with our God, our Savior Jesus Christ, and some even use his name Yeshua the Messiah. Uh, I I will sometimes say Yeshua. Anyway, uh, one of my, and, and by the way, where it says the Lord in all caps, L-O-R-D in the Old Testament, that comes from the Hebrew Y-H-V-H, and so sometimes I'll say Yehovah. Um, sometimes people say Yahweh. But, you know, the Lord is not what it means. The Lord is not what it sounds like. The Lord is not the original. So I sometimes will say Yehovah. Sometimes I'll just read the Lord too, whatever. But, but be aware of that. Anyway, one of my greatest goals is to feel like I'm truly coming to know my wonderful Savior, Jesus. Paul's goal stated in Philippians 3.10 was that I may know him. He says, I'm willing to drop everything else. That I may know him. Know him. You know, I can know somebody, that who they are, but to really know somebody, I have to spend time with them and be with them and so on. I think I have a sermon on knowing God, or to know God. You can put that in the search bar and just type it in, knowing God, and see what comes up. So our Light on the Rock site has hundreds of sermons, hundreds of articles or blogs. Please check them out. And I invite you to please comment on the blogs as well. It helps a lot if you like the blog or the sermon when you see it. Uh, it helps us in our ranking and our the ability for other people to find it easier when they're Googling for different topics. So please uh, write comments. Please uh, 
watch and, and, and like if you can. So today I'm going to talk about the way we react when world news can be very upsetting. National news, world news, local news. And yet we know certain things have to happen. But how should we be reacting now? Should we be sitting there numb, really? Jesus did forewarn us it's going to be including a time of the worst trouble and persecution the world has ever seen, the Great Tribulation. Matthew 24, Luke 21, I think it's Mark 13 is the other one. But Matthew 24, verses 36 to 9, 39, says it will be as in the days of Noah. Now think about that. Two things stand out in my mind about the days of Noah. Some of you will say three things, but I'll mention the two things, that time can be so wicked that time in Noah's time was so wicked that Genesis 6 says everyone's thoughts were continually evil. It also mentions that there's severe violence. And then secondly, when the end time came for the people of Noah's day, it says it came like a trap, shutting suddenly, un unexpectedly, the suddenness of the judgment of God. And so he says it's going to be like in the days of Noah. It's not just talking about it being evil. It's talking about, and, and some really strange things that happened in the days of Noah with the Nephilim, the giants, and all of that. But he also says that when it finally came to it, it was like a trap. Boom! Just suddenly click, and there you have it happening. How bad did that have to be? That just one man, and his wife, I guess, and his three sons and their wives... But initially it says, one man found grace with God. Don't miss that. Found grace, found favor with God. And apparently his wife and three sons and daughters-in-law, so a total of eight people, deemed by God to be worth salvaging. Out of the, all the many millions, maybe billions of people on the earth at that time, because they lived a long time and had a lot of kids, just one man and his family. Just them in the ark. Everyone else had to, had to be let go. So Genesis 6, 5 and verse 11 describe that the rest of mankind just had evil thoughts all the day long. And the world was full of violence. So we have a ways to go yet, perhaps, maybe several years. Uh, I don't think it's going to be much more than several years to equal the kind of world where only one family was deemed salvageable. And then we'll see in the fifth seal of Revelation 6, the great tribulation, a time of trouble, this earth has never seen the likes of. But keep in mind as well that God's people are not to be caught off guard. Even though Jesus at one point said to his disciples, you will not know the day or the hour. But in 1 Thessalonians 5, I'll put the entire passage in my notes. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 2 to 10, you yourselves know perfectly well. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 to 10, that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. In other words, unexpectedly. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains. Upon a pregnant woman... <clears throat> And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You're all sons of the light, sons of the day. So we should know when this is about to happen, he says. Verse 7, uh, those who sleep, sleep in the night. But verse 8, he says, let those of us who are of the day be sober. And let's get with it, he's saying. Verse 9, God did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, um, that we should live together with him, and so on. So I'm going to keep moving here. So that's what I want to talk about today, how God's children, according to his word, should be reacting to terrifying and depressing world news events. We shouldn't be terrified and depressed. But how should we be, be, re be reacting? I'm going to, at this point, uh, start giving some tips and points that I think are very, very helpful I'm being led right now, even though I had it in my notes for far later in my notes, to actually say right now that one of the things we should be doing is found in, I believe it's in Luke 21. It's way down in my notes. 
yeah, that we should be looking up and lifting up our heads and praising God. Luke 21, verses 25 to 28. Okay, that is a point that I really want to say clearly right now. It's like I'm, I'm being pushed in my mind here to go straight there. Luke 21, 25 to 28. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to happen, don't get depressed, he's saying. Don't get numb. Look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So when those things begin to happen, he's saying to his people who are apparently still here on earth, look up. Lift up your heads. He's talking here about the, uh, the sixth seal here. The signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. Because the fifth seal, the Great Tribulation, is in the verses before this. So it's clear to me these people are still on the earth, but he's saying don't get depressed about it. Look up, look up instead. The next thing I want to say is that we are to actually spend more time with God. Hang on. I moved. Okay. Spend more time coming to know your Father, coming to know your Savior, Jesus. And the word of God, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and, 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 uh, you know, and his righteousness. And then all the things you would like to have will come upon you. So grow in the faith in Yeshua, our Messiah. So when the earth teeters and totters like a drunkard, like the Bible says it will, you know where to have your peace. 1 John 4, verses 17 to 19 Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. If you really understand verse 17, that is such a powerful verse. That we have boldness in the day of judgment. Don't be afraid to be judged. And you won't be afraid if you understand about the way God sees us when we're in Christ. Verse 18, that's a different topic though. There is no fear in love. If we perfectly love God. He says there's no fear in love. We have a deep respect for him. We have a deep respect for his ways, his law, his word, everything. But he says, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. I want to say again, I really recommend you guys print out the sermon and have it there as I speak. There are times I will say much more. Uh, audibly then I have time to put into notes so I recommend that have both have the audible uh, audio as well as the notes so when we tend to focus on the mark of the beast or on the Antichrist or on the Pope or what Trump and Biden are doing or or DeSantis when we're that, that means we're on our way to losing our first love we're looking at other things we're looking at other people. We're looking at other events instead of our husband, Jesus Christ. We're distancing ourselves from God, evidenced by what we're feeding into our mind and the time we're spending on it. So spend much more time coming to know your Father and Savior. Let me put it another way. Focus more of your, focus more time on your anointed one, your Messiah, uh, than on focusing on events and world troubles. If we're doing it properly, we really won't have much time to spend on things that upset us. Because take a lot more time to seek God right now in the next few years. Take a lot more time. And you will have perfect peace in troubling times. Be sure you hear my sermon with that title, Perfect Peace in Troubling Times. Learn it well. It could save you a lot of anxiety later on. Paul's greatest goal, he said in Philippians 3, verses 8 to 11, I will put the whole passage in my notes. But he said, I'm willing to give everything up that I thought was so great and just throw them away as rubbish, as dung, 
that I may gain Christ and be found in him. And then he says in verse 10, my whole goal is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Not my own resurrection. I want to know his resurrection. I want Christ living in me. He died for my sins, but he was raised for my life. He is now my life. He is now my righteousness. So that's what Paul says. I want to focus on knowing him and the power of his resurrection. John 5, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. John 5, 38 to 40, yeah, speaking to the Jews of his day, the Jewish leaders, you do not have his word abiding in you because he sent him whom he sent, you have not believed. John 5, 38, now verse 39. Listen, apply this to yourself. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Then these are they which testify of me. But you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. We like knowledge so much. You know, the two trees in our life, in a way, are still there. The tree of knowledge. The full name is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the other one was the tree of life. Who is the life? The life is Jesus Christ. Do we come seeking him, talking to him, and coming to know him? Is that really where we're going every day? Or are we trying to get more knowledge all the time? Who are the two witnesses? Who's the beast? What's the mark of the beast? What's 666 mean? That's all knowledge. It's not wrong, I guess, to have that kind of knowledge, but who are you seeking? Knowledge or the tree of life, which represents Jesus Christ? You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, um, that leads now, now to the next point, what Paul says, when we have troubling things happening, watch what you're thinking about. The context was the things that worry you and having peace of God beyond our ability to explain. And then that's in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. And remember when Paul wrote that, he was in jail. He had chains on him. I believe that's the case. So Philippians 4, 8, where our thoughts should be. And when I focus on this command, I found myself cutting out a lot of time that I would have spent on news instead. I still watch the news, but, oh, maybe a fifth of what I used to. I don't have to watch channel, I mean, uh, program after program. So I found myself cutting out a lot of news. Focus instead on what it says here in Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. I just listen carefully. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Brethren, I guess. New Living wants to include the women, and that's, that's good. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Imagine what would happen if we said, okay, that's not true. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to think about it. Honorable, right and pure, lovely, and admirable. The New King James used slightly different wording for some of those, but true was certainly there. Uh, what sort of things are honorable and right and pure? Lovely, godly, all that kind of things. Those are things to think about. Think about things that are excellent, worthy of praise, not the gossipy kind of stuff. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing, I'm still quoting Paul, then the God of peace will be with you. You want peace in these troubling times? Put your thoughts on what's true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. For example, it says don't, don't deal with lies, deal with things that are true. Much of what our leaders, both parties, are, are saying to us are lies. And by the way, let me just say right now, I am not of the donkey party. I am not of the elephant party, the Republicans. I belong to the Lamb of God. Too many of you, and sometimes I have in the past, admittedly, 
been too involved in identifying with the politics of this world. We get involved so much it upsets us when one party lies, they both lie. But there are a lot of lies we're being told right now, such as, just so you're aware of it, and then you decide, I'm not going to focus on those things, I'm going to focus on the truth. The border is secure. No, it's not. They're coming over by the thousands, and it will be thousands per day real soon. This inflation is just for a few months. No, it wasn't. And we're told that Zelensky, President Zelensky of the Ukraine, is defending democracy. He is. He imprisoned his political rival as soon as he became president. Right now, he's arresting priests. He's keeping a close watch, he said, on the, on the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And he said, anyone practicing religion outside our prescribed rules will be arrested. He's closed down most of the media if they say anything bad about him. That's democracy. And that's the one we're giving billions of dollars to without any accounting, without any audits. His actions are actually destroying freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, and democracy in his country. Remember, Ukraine used to be ranked, probably still is, one of the top three or four most corrupt countries in the world. Where do you think all those billions are going to? Do you think it's all exactly just for things it's prescribed to be? And they have a lot of dirt, remember, on the Bidens. So anyway, we, anyway, we know we're being lied to, but we don't let that be our focus. Whatever things are true and noble, just and pure, ponder on these things. Not so much on the politics and the world news that are lies. Your thoughts will affect your moods, and your moods will affect what you do. Here's another point. Make use, make use of remaining time. Be more aware than ever we only have a, possibly a few years left. Some things are happening for the first time that Paul and Peter and all those people never ever saw. It was never possible for the whole world to be watching the two witnesses and then to watch them be killed and watch them rise up. The whole world. Elon Musk is putting up hundreds and thousands, in fact, of satellites all around the globe in low orbit to provide cheap internet to everywhere. That has never happened before. And the, the other thing about world events, it's the convergence of all of these world events all happening at the same time. So we may have just a few years to go. Those of us who are older, especially, I'm almost 70, our health issues could end our life right now. Then our next waking moment is either being judged or resurrected for the first resurrection. So use the remaining time we have in this life. Use it well. Get in shape spiritually. Spend more time studying and praying. Going for what I call my walk and talks with God. I go for a walk around the blocks a few times and, and I use it for a time to talk with God privately. And sometimes I sit, sit out in the line. Of course, sometimes I kneel down beside my bed. I do a lot of things that way. But it's also time to redeem, make the most use of our time. Ephesians 5, verses 11 to 16. Ephesians 5, 11 to 16, Paul says, Look, don't have any fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Expose them. It's shameful to even talk about the things people do in secret. And then he goes on to say, Wake up, you who sleep, arise from the dead. And then he goes on, verse 15, and then that you may walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. The NIV says, making the most use of every opportunity. The English Standard Version says, make the most use of your time, the best use of your time. And then the National, I mean the uh, New American Standard 
NASB says, making the most of your time. And there are other verses that talk about redeeming the time as well, that we are to make sure we're not just lally-gagging around doing nothing. Remember, the more of you on Facebook, the more time you're on Facebook, the more they know about you and your list of friends. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others that you may be spending so much time on. Just monitor how much time you're spending on Facebook and Facebook-related places, and Twitter, and Instagram. Might surprise you. But my point here about friends and the lists, when the time comes for the Great Tribulation, they'll want to know who all your friends are, who might think like you do. It will be so easy to round up all our friends in the time of the greatest trouble because of all this social media where we put a lot of our own data on there and our own opinions and things we think and say and we're upset about this, we're happy about that. And here are my friends. I'm probably going to be coming off Facebook before long, very soon. Another point, understand for most of the past thousands of years, most of God's people have had to endure persecution. So why do we feel we shouldn't have to? I think perhaps there's been an overemphasis on the place of safety for God's people, or perhaps an overemphasis on the rapture, if you believe in a pre-trib rapture, pre-tribulation. God's own son had to suffer immensely. The original 12 apostles suffered immensely. Even though John wasn't killed or executed, they tried to. He was put in boiling oil, but it didn't kill him. The world, it says in Hebrews 11, 37 to 39, wasn't worthy of them. But we need to condition our mind that, hey, I'm willing. And Paul said he actually wanted to suffer for Christ. So Paul says in Philippians 1, 27 to 30. Let me just pick up in verse 29. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since you're going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Verse 28 talks about don't be frightened in any way by those who oppose you. Don't be frightened by them. But it has been granted for us to suffer for him. Enter the kingdom of God through much tribulation. Doesn't it say that in, in, in the book of Acts when Paul was in Ephesus? So keep that all in mind. There is some good news that some of God's people, it does seem, will be afforded protection. The Philadelphian type people, Revelation 3, verse 10 to 11, the Philadelphia church, I don't mean Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I'm talking about the Philadelphia over there in what is now Turkey. It's now called something different. Because you have kept my command to persevere, Revelation 3, verse 10 and 11. Because you've kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world. That's talking about the Great Tribulation to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, and no one take your crown. So that does seem to indicate that some people, those with a um, Philadelphian kind of mindset, would be, will be protected. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and cares of this life. Don't be weighed down by partying all the time, going golfing all the time, or being worried all the time. Nothing wrong with golfing, nothing wrong with having a party. But if you're doing that a lot, you're taken away from time focused on God. Something else has become your main love. You've lost your first love. 
Cares of this life and that, that, that day come upon you unexpectedly for it come as a snare. Bang! There it is. On all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. The very end time will be, come suddenly. Watch therefore. It doesn't just mean watch world news. It means to watch yourself. To watch your relationship. Guard that. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. There's just not going to be one. Christ comes after the tribulation. I'm going to read that to you in a second. Now, those were his words. The, the tribulation, of course, refers to the time of extra severe persecution and martyrdom. Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. Matthew 24, 39 to, to 31. Immediately after, let me read that again, immediately after the tribulation of those days. He had just talked about a great tribulation, a worst time of trouble the world has ever seen. Then he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. Tribulation is the fifth seal of Revelation 6. The sun and the moon, the stars and all that is, are the signs in the heavens. Uh, the, the, the sixth seal of Revelation 6. And the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then, after the tribulation, then the, son of, the, son, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven all the tribes of the earth, all the ethnic groups will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then verse 31 says he'll send his angels out with a great sound of a trumpet. This is describing the last trumpet, the first resurrection. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So his elect apparently are still here on earth, from one end, it says end of heaven, but it means you know from all over the place. And they, they'll be gathered. If they were already with him, why would they have to be gathered? But my point is all of that happens after the tribulation. So there's not going to be a pre-trib. There's not going to be pre-trib rapture. Not even a mid-trib rapture. Okay? I say trib, I mean tribulation. And also pray like Elisha did for his servant, that you and I become aware of the presence of powerful guardian angels around us. There's a story in 2 Kings 6 you ought to read, starting in verse 15 especially. Uh, the armies of Syria were out trying to find out where Elisha and his servant were because God would tell them what Elisha's, I mean, what the Syrian king's plans were. And so everything they said and did was being relayed to the king of Israel. And then finally, the servant was so scared what the armies that he saw, Elisha says, God, open his eyes, please. And so God did. And then, whether Elisha saw them there also or just knew they were there, invisibly to everybody, but now the servant was had his eyes open to see that there were thousands of powerful angelic warrior angels circling around overhead in fiery chariots. Powerful guardian angels. We have that too. Pray for that. Pray for that protection. Realize God wants to give it to you. I remember a story, I've told this story before, but a woman, um, one of God's children, was home alone one time. Her husband was gone. And this man came to the door, came inside, and I think he had a knife or something. Um, anyway, but he, he told her, go to the bedroom. Obviously, he had bad intentions. So as she turned to go to the bedroom, she was praying feverishly. And then she faced him. And then the man looked up behind her head and above her head with fear in his, in his face. He started, okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. I don't mean anything, I'm going to go. She turned around, didn't say anything. He ran out the door. Ran out of the home. 
he obviously, in my opinion, saw a powerful guardian angel. Some of these angels can look pretty scary. Four faces. <laughs> if it's a cherub, cherub, whatever you want to say. Or just a regular angel, just a big, tough angel. And he probably would have said something. Who are you? What are you doing here? But the lady hadn't heard or saw it. I hadn't seen or heard anything. But the man appeared like he had been talked to and reprimanded and was scared to death. So, um, let's keep going then. So, God likes to know, wants us to know that he wants to protect us as best he can. Psalm 34, verse 6 and 7, the poor man cried out, and the Lord Jehovah heard him, saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of Jehovah encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Psalm 34, verse 6 and 7. Psalm 91, the whole, the whole chapter talks about God is my refuge and my, my refuge and my fortress. We trust him. Now be sure you avoid some of the mistakes though about this protection from God. Don't make having your own protection be your goal. Make coming to know Jesus be your goal. He'll do the rest. Don't overemphasize protection from God. Yes, pray that you be counted worthy to escape, Luke 21, 36. Yes, believe Revelation 3.10. Those of a Philadelphian sort will be spared the hour of trial coming. But don't overly focus on that. Remember, Jesus said those who seek to save their lives will lose it. Luke 17, 33, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. So don't make that mistake. And then remember Luke 21, 36. No, this is something else. Yeah, Luke 21, verse 28, I mean, but, but there God says, when you see all these things happening, lift up your heads, praise. Be excited because your redemption draws near. That should be our reaction. Be excited about it. Man alive. All these Starlink satellites by the thousands going up there so everyone in the world can see what's happening anywhere in the world. That's exciting. That's proof we're at the very end time. That particular piece of news has never been there before until now and then also of course be taking steps you guys please be taking steps to do the sensible thing of knowing that there's gonna come starvation and famine and drought and problems take some steps now to prepare some things not only for years of care but at least for the emergency two or three weeks worth in the end, we all have to trust God. In the end, we all will have to trust God. But be sure, I, I do right now. I have spare water. I have spare gas. Gasoline, petrol. I have spare food. I have spare essentials like lights and batteries, lamps, heating and cooking systems, firewood, a gas grill outside with extra tanks. I want that food and water for several weeks spared. God may allow that to be taken away and make me have to totally trust in him. Sure, I know that. Times of drought and famine, uh, people will go house to house getting whatever food they can find from who, however they can. But also financially, maybe diversify your portfolio a little bit, maybe buy some silver or gold. When the paper money is worthless, this may buy you a little extra time if you have some silver or gold, but don't make that your goal or what you count on. But remember, in the end, we have to have faith in Jesus. Ezekiel 7 verse 19 is a prophecy for the end time. Gold and silver will be thrown in the streets when they realize that no matter how much gold and silver they have, when it gets bad enough, they can't find, they can't buy food 
at all because there is no food. Ezekiel 7.19, they'll throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath of Jehovah, of the Lord. They will not satisfy their souls. They would not fill their stomachs because it became their stumbling block of iniquity. So if you have some, some, but don't look at that as your source of protection or source of being able to buy food. But again, let me just say, have that peace of mind of looking up and praising him. These things are finally happening. Hallelujah. Seek God as never before. Seek Christ himself. You, you wouldn't come to me that you may have life. Remember? Come out of the time wasters. Cut them out. Consider cutting out much of the social media time you're spending. Uh, I'm going to come off Facebook. I'm writing it down right now. I don't know how to come off Facebook. If any of you know how, let me know. Um, think on positive things. Philippians 4.8, whatever things are true and noble and right and pure and praiseworthy and so on. Think on these things. Realize suffering for Christ's sake was part of the plan. Not just to test us, to show God our faithfulness to him and test us. But trials make us stronger. Trials become a witness to the world, as Paul's were. Read Philippians 1 sometimes. I think it's Philippians 1 where he said, even the whole palace guard is now aware of my chains and Jesus Christ. It's through suffering that we're perfected. Some of God's people will go through the great tribulation, those especially of the Laodicean type of mentality. Buy, I, I urge you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. That's a euphemism for understand you're going to be tested. But others will be protected. There's no pre-trib rapture. And then I mentioned at the end, take some make some preparations. Not, not that you're putting all your stock and faith in those things, but it just makes sense to have some spare water, some spare food, spare gasoline, emergency heating and co uh, cooking. <laughs> cooking. I believe the balance is to trust and have faith in God no matter what we see going on, no matter what he allows us to go through. Have faith in him, in him. Our lives are in his hands. But as we get closer, we lift up our eyes and we praise him and we thank him for everything he's about to do and is doing and getting us ready for the millennial reign of our Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. Praise be to our God and Father, our Creator and Savior. won't be long now before we're all together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the peace we can have in you no matter what you put us through. And yes, we know that you put your own 12 apostles, maybe not John quite as much, but apostles, your own son, your prophets, most of them were severely persecuted and many of them were killed. Father, if that's what we need to go through to testify of you no matter what, then so be it. We also pray that we be counted worthy to escape these things by seeking you with every minute we can find, which means cutting out the garbage, cutting out the time wasters. Now, not putting it off any longer. Praying more often, seeking you more often, meditating with you more often. So Father, these scary times are coming. Let us not be scared, but to have faith in you and rejoice that it's getting ever closer. We trust you, we love you with all of our mind. In Jesus' name, amen.